Hey everyone, and welcome back to another comic video. I know it's been a while, but I'm glad to get back on the comics because, well, that's kind of how I started the channel, and they're some of my favorites. So picking up at part 7, issue 7 of the Darth Vader comics 2020, taking place after episode 5, and if you haven't seen part 654321, I have a playlist for you, you can go check them out, but you can also check the link in the description where I will link each one for you as well. This one takes place right after issue 6, so I'm not going to recap, I'm just going to get right into it, and you can do the rest yourself if you want to follow along. Let's continue. Into the Fire, Part 2, The Assassin. Darth Vader revealed the truth. He is Luke Skywalker's father. But Luke refused Vader's call to the dark side of the Force and escaped. Enraged, Vader tore through the galaxy on a quest of revenge against everyone who hid Luke from him. Following Vader's defiant actions, Emperor Palpatine brutally punished his apprentice and left him broken and stranded on Mustafar. All of the Jedi... Even the younglings. All of them. You have done well, my apprentice. Now, Lord Vader, go and bring peace to the Empire. Peace, master. As we get a quick cut to Order 66 scene, which takes place right after Anakin executed Order 66 in the Jedi Temple, which we see a glimpse of when Obi-Wan is viewing Anakin through the hollow recordings, this scene right here depicts exactly what that conversation was between Anakin and the Emperor, which is pretty sweet because we never got to see that actual scene of the Emperor walking through the Jedi Temple. We're quickly transported to Vader as he snaps out of his little vision on Mustafar where Palpatine left him to sort of regain his strength and find who he is once again by saying that he needs to first die in order to be reborn, so to speak. At this point, we can see Vader is reaching for his castle. He is extremely enraged and he questions the peace that his master is trying to push on to him to bring peace to the Empire. And he says, how is this peace? And he starts to say, you will never know peace again. As he makes his way over to the same spot where he destroyed the Separatists in Revenge of the Sith, which this is a really cool moment that he's going back to that same spot. He sees someone is approaching, or rather feels them. Ochi of Bestoon, hidden by the soot and wind and smoke of Mustafar. Crawling through, he makes his way and remembers the different moments of when he killed the Separatists during Order 66, when he was still Anakin. And we can see that while he was killing them, he actually had the thought of the younglings in his mind. As he crawls through the space, he sees the different bodies laying there still to this day, now mummified, remembering how Newt Gunray pleaded for peace and that Sidious promised them that when Anakin killed him. And now Vader sees the remains of his body decayed over decades of time. As Vader has his way with some mouth droids, he realizes that one of them is actually carrying a leg from a battle droid. Attaching it to himself, he starts to put himself together with super battle droid parts and regular battle droid parts. I guess Vader is truly a transformer at this point, someone cue the music. I know I'm late. Hope you don't feel patronized. I just didn't want this to end too quickly. Ochi of Bestoon appears in the doorway to kill Vader. The Emperor said he'd forbidden you to use the Force, and when I saw you dragging yourself with just one arm across the sand, well, I respected the tenacity, but I like killing people who can stand on their own two feet. So I hope you've made good use of your time, because you are fresh out of it now. As Vader disappears to make a strike from above, he lands on Ochi of Bestoon with his lightsaber ignited. But of course, the armor, which could very well be Beskar or something else, protects him. As they fight with one another, each besting the other, and of course Vader extremely limited with the body that he has now after Sidious destroyed it. He ends up outside of the control center. The two sort of have a cat and mouse moment where Ochi of Bestoon tells him that this is the last face that you'll ever see, which is funny since he's wearing a mask, and Vader wonders if he is a Sith or not, and tells him, or rather warns him, that Sidious will just use him and discard of him once he's done with his errands. Where Ochi says, well that's what Sidious did with you because you got weak. Letting those handmaidens live, what kind of example does that set? So your master broke you, and now you're trying to break me. You're not my master. As Vader force chokes Ochi, he interrogates him and asks him what the Emperor wants from him. When he finally becomes irritated and throws him into the corner, landing on a rock, as Vader walks through lava itself. Now if you didn't know this about Vader's suit, his suit is pretty bulletproof, in the sense that not just against bullets, but the vacuum of space against water, fire, pretty much any element except for electricity. And it was made like that so that Sidious would have the upper hand on him because if, well, if he didn't know, Sidious
Sidious' main power in the Force was to fire Force Sith lightning, and this would of course keep Vader in line like his little dog. As the two fight, or rather, Archie of Bestoon tries to survive the battle that Vader is bringing him, he basically tells him that Sidious has a power that you don't know of, and Vader says, well no, I've seen his power and I've seen yours, and it's nothing special. But Archie of Bestoon tells him that Sidious cannot be killed with a laser sword. He cannot be destroyed, and of course, I guess this is alluding to his return or his immortality. Power beyond your understanding and mine. Power that only the Emperor could build. Build, says Vader. And where is he building this power? I didn't say. You said it all. Where? As a creature emerges from the distance, we start to see that Vader is intrigued by what this creature is. Ochi jumps over Vader and lands on the platform, leaving Vader in the lava. As Ochi tries to tell Vader that he was cheating and using the Force all along, now that the creature has felt his presence, or felt his calling, Vader corrects him and says that he didn't call it, that it was calling for him. As Vader tosses his lightsaber to kill Ochi, Ochi actually grabs it and closes the cave on Vader. As the creature tells Vader, You threw your life away so quickly just to hear what I might have to say. You don't even know what questions to ask or how to understand the answers. <laughs> Look at you. Your fury cannot solve the riddles of the Eye of the Webbish Bog. And that's where the issue ends. Now, if you don't know who this guy is, this creature is essentially in the concept art for the episode 9 movie and novel. He was actually in the novel. So this creature appears to Kylo Ren and is the one that Kylo Ren has to sort of get by in order so he can get the Wayfinder from the remnants of Vader's castle in order to find Exegol. So I feel like this is going to be the moment where Vader and the Eye of the Webbish Bog meet and they sort of have some sort of a connection or something like that and maybe go under some training or something. I mean, this creature is pretty weird. He's pretty mystical looking and I have no clue what his powers are. And the fact that he was calling to Vader means that he may be strong in the force. And of course that he was protecting the Wayfinder. So I'd imagine that this creature was given some sort of purpose or status or power or has some ability to ward off those that are not worthy. And so the next issue, issue eight, is Into the Fire Part 3, where we will continue this story and see what becomes of Vader. Does he get his body back? Does he get his strength back? Does he get retribution? Does he get revenge on Sidious? And what happens to him and this Eye of the Webbish Bog, this super creepy looking figure? Fun fact, if you didn't know, this creature was actually filmed. They actually created the whole model of this massive beast. They filmed the scene and they ended up cutting it from the film. I feel like it would have really added to the entire movie so much more. And it would have helped, of course, with world building, but also mainly for Kylo's arc. And to see that he's really able to get through different different aspects, puzzles, and past different oracles, so to speak, if that's what the Eye of the Webbish Bog is, to take him to the next level where many others before him, I'm sure, have tried to get the Wayfinder, couldn't get past. So it's unfortunate that they didn't add it. Maybe they'll add it someday. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this comic issue. I thank you guys for requesting me to continue these comics. I know you know how I feel about them now, but it's always fun to get back into these. And of course, I will be getting back into the Dark Horse ones as well. Anyways, I hope you guys will have a great rest of your day. Please Please leave a like if you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one. Check me out on Spotify and at StarWarsTheory.com. Until the next video, remember, the Force will be with you, always.